Thanks to your faithful support of the FPG TV Club, Faith Pleases God Church is changing lives. I want to thank you, Pastor Carlos, for being the vessel in which God uses to teach His Word. Thank you for teaching us to understand that we need to be saved and that God will never forsake us. He is always there because we are chosen by Him. Paul, Far Texas. Your giving has helped Faith Pleases God spread God's message throughout the world, changing the hearts and the lives of men. We would like to extend an invitation to become an FPG TV Club member. As a TV Club member, you will receive a membership card and a monthly video by Pastor Carlos Ortiz. Join the FPG TV Club. Call 956-428-4848 or write to us at P.O. Box 530-777, Harlington, Texas 78553. Open your Bibles to the book of Isaiah, chapter 54, verse 13. Isaiah 54, 13. We want to pray and believe God for a happy Mother's Day for all you mothers. Turn to that person next to you. Look at them. Say, Happy Mother's Day to you too. We're going to teach you today how to get your child saved. I know that, you know, many mothers that are watching us here in the church are already saved, but there are those that do not have all their children saved, and today we're going to teach you how to do that. Amen? But I have with me a pastor, a friend of mine all the way from the New York area who's going to be a blessing. This brother got the word of faith through an anointing that the Lord sent off from here when we went down to Puerto Rico and shared the word of faith and prosperity with Brother Font. He took that word and went to Argentina and preached it in Argentina, and it just took over Argentina with the word of faith and prosperity. That same word, Brother Font brought it to Los, you know, all over. He even went down to Los Angeles, and the Lord touched him. There was a pastor in Argentina that got a handle of this word, he preached it to this man, and this man went, ended up, God sent them to the New York, New Jersey area, started two big churches over there right now with the same word of faith, and now he's back here to share it with us. So truly the scripture that says, you cast your bread upon the waters, and after many days it will come back to you, this has really come back to us, amen? And I really thank God for this brother who's, who's ministering to us uh, this morning. It was a tremendous blessing in the, English, in the Spanish service. And he's going to be with us again on uh, 5 o'clock this afternoon in Spanish. And I want to encourage you, if you do not know Spanish, come anyway. You know, Dr. Hamilton used to come to my meetings. He says, I, I don't understand what you said, but I just like the goosebumps, you know. So he will come and be anointed, and that's what I encourage you to do. But I have asked the pastor to come and share with us a few minutes for you to have a, an idea of what the Lord has done in his heart. And he still has his, uh, his microphone on his lapel. Pastor Di Rocco, come up here. Give them a faith, please, as God. Welcome. And... I'm going, to I'm going to interpret for him, and since he's from Argentina, speaks Spanish and Italian and all of that, and all I do is speak Tex-Mex, so bear with me. Yo te voy a interpretar, deja que el Espíritu Santo te guíe. Yes. Estás en tu casa. Amen. God bless you. Dios me lo bendiga. <laughs> That's it. Eso es todo. <laughs> Es un placer estar con ustedes aquí hoy. It is an, a, a blessing to be here with you today. Hay una unción muy hermosa aquí. There is a beautiful anointing in this place. Algo está pasando. There is a beautiful thing happening here. Algo está pasando. Something is happening. Y yo creo. And I believe. Que es un día de poder para usted. That it is a day of power for you. Yo siento la unción de Dios. I sense the presence of the Lord. Le voy a decir algo. I'm going to tell you something. Espero que no le suene vanaglorioso. I hope it doesn't sound to you like vainglorious. Dios. God. No mueve a sus siervos. Does not move his servants. Por moverlos. Just for moving them. Yo no... Conocí al varón de Dios. I did not know the man of God. Hace cuatro años que estaba orando por conocerlo. I've been praying to God for four years to meet him. Y de una manera que solo Dios lo hace. And only a way that God can do. Yo lo conocí. I met him. Hace tres semanas atrás. Three weeks ago. En mi mente no estaba estar aquí. In my mind was not to be here today. Ni en mi agenda estaba. Not even in my agenda. Pero en la agenda de Dios sí. But in God's agenda it was. Y yo sé, and I know, que si Dios me trajo aquí, that if God brought me here, es para hacer algo, is to do something, para mostrar su gloria, to show off His glory, mostrar su poder, 
to show off his power hacer milagros to do miracles porque él es un dios de milagros because god is a god of miracles yo soy un milagro i am a miracle yo soy un milagro caminando i am a walking miracle Dios me sanó a mí de una enfermedad incurable. God healed me of an incurable disease. A los disease seis años. When I was six years old. Dios me sanó. God healed me. Yo soy un milagro caminando. I am a walking miracle. Por eso creo en un Dios de milagros. That's why I believe in the God of miracles. No se pierda el culto de hoy. Don't miss tonight's service. Si usted no habla español. If you do not speak Spanish. No se preocupe. Don't worry about it. Si usted tiene el Espíritu Santo, if you got the Holy Ghost, me va a entender. You will understand me. Yo voy a las cruzadas de Benny Hinn. I go to Benny Hinn's crusades. No le entiendo nada. I don't understand one word. Pero recibo todo. But I receive the anointing. Termino con él. Hace dos años atrás, two years ago, yo siendo hispano. Me being a Hispanic, no entendiendo inglés, did not understand English. Pero por amar la unción de Benny Hinn, but to love the anointing of Benny Hinn, Dios me regaló ser el pastor hispano. God gave me the blessing to be the coordiné, Hispanic pastor. Que coordiné la cruzada. That coordinated the crusade. En Long Island. In Long Island. New York. New York. El coro de Benny ensayó en mi iglesia. And the choir came out of my own church. Tuve el privilegio de estar en el púlpito con él. I had the privilege to be with Benny in the pulpit. Usted ni se imagina cómo terminé. I don't need to tell you how I finished. Me agarró y terminé borracho en el piso. I was drunk in the spirit by the time I was true. No se lo pierda. Don't miss it tonight. Hoy algo va a ocurrir en usted. Something's going to happen to you tonight. Yo no puedo callar algo que tengo en mi corazón. I cannot keep my mouth shut from what God is doing with me. Hoy es el día de las madres. Today is Mother's Day. ¿Cuántas madres hay aquí? How many mothers are here? Dios les bendiga. God bless you. Pero yo sé, but I know, y siento en mi espíritu, and I sense in my spirit, que hay mujer, that there are women, que no puede tener hijos, that cannot have children, y tienes el dolor en tu alma, and you have a pain in your soul, de no poder tener hijos, not to have children. Dios me ha dado la unción, God has given me an anointing, para orar por las estériles, to pray for the sterile. Tengo nietos por todos lados. I got grandchildren all over the place. Mujeres que no podían tener hijos. Women that couldn't have children. Y hoy están teniendo hijos. Now they're having children. Dios te puede tocar. God can touch you too. Luego yo voy a orar por ti. Then I will be praying for you. Dios me dio ocho hijos. God gave me eight children. Espero que te dé a ti también ocho. I pray that God will give you eight also. God bless you. God bless you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, let me tell you, he not only got the anointing of the Holy Ghost <coughs> through the word of faith and prosperity, he's also got the sense of humor. And boy, do we need that in the body of Christ. Do I hear an amen? amen? One thing I hate to see is one of those dry prune preachers. They think that being, being spiritual is walking around real serious. And they prune their face. <laughs> <laughs> to be spiritual is to walk in love. Amen. amen. Did you find Isaiah 54, 13 yet? Listen to what he says. All your children shall be taught by the Lord, and great shall be the peace of your children. That is the biggest promise that God can give a mother. That all your children shall be taught by the Lord. Say, all my children, all my children will, be be will be taught by the Lord. Now, don't you think God can do a better job than you teaching your children? I thank God that God can teach my children. If, if, if my children were depending on me to teach them, I think they're going to be in trouble. Because all of us, how many of you know we are not perfect? How many of you know that what they see is what they learn more than what we say? Our children just, you know, you can't pull many things over their eyes. They just, you know, they, they, they just see what, what goes on. And many of us, just, that's just the way it is. There's nothing we can do about it. I'm here to tell you that God can teach your children. But if you don't believe God to teach your children, then the promise will not come to pass. Because it clearly says, All your children shall be taught by the Lord, and great shall be the peace of your children. So in order for your children to have peace, God needs to teach them. When a child has peace, he does not need drugs. When a child has peace, he does not need alcohol. When a child has peace, he does not need anything aside from himself to be at peace. 
I want here to tell you that when the child has God teaching him, he is complete. He is about to be blessed. I thank God for that scripture. I'll never forget Sister Tommy. This woman was one of Kenneth Copeland's prayer warriors. Kenneth Copeland has in his ministry, thank God for his beautiful ministry, he pays people to pray for them 40 hours a week. And this woman was a prayer warrior. He turned around and paid her to pray for his ministry and the needs of the ministry. And this woman starts praying at 8 o'clock in the morning, 12 o'clock she goes for lunch, comes back and keeps on praying from 1 to 5, 8 hours a day, Monday to Friday. That's all she does. No sooner did she started doing that, that all her children got all riled up. Well, she knew that scripture, Isaiah 54, 13. So instead of getting worried about it, she just started confessing that scripture. She said, Father God, your, your word says that all my children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of my children. What turns out is that the child, the three kids, one came in about 30 days later from her believing that scripture. The second one came in about seven, eight months later. The third one took longer than that. But every time that woman spoke about that child, which was the worst one of the lot, he got into drugs, he got into everything you can think of. She would always say, my child is a disciple, taught of the Lord, great is his peace and undisturbed composure. And the child's name was Michael. So everywhere he talked about Michael, you know Michael has an aunt. How many of you know that Michaels have aunts? And you know aunts like to go by what they see. And just because Michael went over to his aunt's house and stole jewelry to feed his drug habit, she got on the phone and called up, and you know how aunts are talking to their sister. Well, you know what your son did to me. All of a sudden, they deny you as family members. Instead of saying, my nephew, they say, your son. And there he is. And your son stole this. And your son stole that. What do you have to say? And this is Tommy talking. My son is a disciple, taught of the Lord. Great is his peace and undisturbed composure. She didn't like that. She wanted for her to come in agreement with how mean and evil and ugly her son was. But this mother was determined to exercise her faith to get her son back. She knew that by saying and confessing how ugly he was, it was not going to change anything. On the contrary, he was going to stay worse. Because you're believing for that. Whatever you're confessing. The Bible says in Mark eleven twenty three 23, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. You keep calling your child a drug addict, a bum, an alcoholic, he'll never amount to anything. That's the way he's going to be. You're getting exactly what you're believing for. Change your believing. Change your confession. Start singing a different song. Well, Tommy kept believing. She kept saying it. She kept confessing it. She kept thanking God. Glory be to God. I thank you, Father God. I praise you, Father God. I thank you that my child is a disciple taught of the Lord. Great is his peace and undisturbed composure. And she comes home one day and there is no living room furniture. She had this beautiful living room furniture that she saved four years to buy. She had this beautiful uh, you know those figurines that come from Spain, porcelain stuff, very expensive, Jadro. She, everything in the living room was gone. The, the sofa was gone. The chair was gone. The love seat was gone. The fancy lamps were gone. See, this was the furniture that was in the living room that nobody used. How many of you know the living room that nobody lives in? Any of you people have a living room like that? You do not go into the living room. Uh, <laughs> and nobody, uh, they don't even let you in there. If you go in there, you got to take off your shoes. And you got to walk in down, you know, like the pink panther. Dun, dun, you know, don't shake the floor. It's fear. It's not a living room. I don't know why they call it the living room. But it is the living room. 
Well, this young man had taken everything in that very fancy living room, sold it all. Now, don't tell me that don't get a mother all riled up. But you know what she said? Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. My son is a disciple, thought of the Lord, and great is his peace and undisturbed composure. She had to call the cops. She wasn't sure that it was him, so, you know, she was able to write it off from uh, the taxes as a loss. Somebody, a burglar, came in and took it. Of course, she didn't say who it was. Every time, I mean, got to the point, she lost all her jewelry. Whenever every neighbor or every relative knew about Michael, let me tell you, they tied up everything. Michael was a talker. He will take off your socks without touching your shoes. That sound familiar, Richard? When you look at me like that, you know better. You used to be one of those. <laughs> I mean, let me tell you, this guy was, I, I cannot understand it. I look at drug addicts and potheads and pill heads, and I think they're the smartest people in the earth. If they ever use that talent in, in the real life of, of selling, wheeling and dealing out there and hustling, they'll make more money than selling drugs. It's sad. They're very intelligent people. You can imagine how intelligent they are. They're able to, to stay out of jail for a couple of years. You got so many law enforcement agents after you, especially down here in the valley. You got every single law enforcement agent that you can think of besides the federal government and the local governments. Man, I won't even think about it just to get away from there. You can't breathe around here. In a day and age, like uh, with satellites that we have right now, we got satellites that can zero in on you while you're walking down the street and they can see the cigarette you're smoking. They can tell the brand name on the cigarette that you're smoking. That's awesome. You're dealing with, 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 with a tremendous amount of technology that you're trying to get away with and think that they're going to throw you in jail. You, you buy some pot in, in, in Brownsville, and you buy a pound of pot, and you try to bring that thing across to New York, they'll let you go to New York with it. But the satellites can tell by the temperature of that pot, they can tell you where it grew, and where in Mexico it was farmed. Hmm. Recently, we've been getting that forest fire in Mexico. How many of you have been seeing that smoke and forest fire? Have you been smelling something funny? Somebody messed up, but they're burning pot down there. I tell you, my baseball team, the FPG Eagles, were playing ball Friday, and they were in the middle of that smoke, and that's why we lost, because they got high on that stuff. I don't know, Romo kept jumping up. <laughs> and Ruben, what happened over there? Who was on third? I mean, he was high. I could tell. He would go. <laughs> they hit the ball through here. He goes. <laughs> <laughs> I have fun watching that. <laughs> but it was fun. But they didn't lose because they didn't have abilities. They were just, you know, the air was too high. You saw that mark, right? It was, it was, it was, it was rough. Even David Lopez here started getting curling up. <laughs> I was out there as long as I could. I mean, uh, I tried to get out of there as long as I could. <laughs> Praise God. And Tommy just kept believing for her son. You couldn't talk bad next to her. Everywhere she went, she would say that my son is going to be a preacher. He is a preacher. I believe he's a preacher. He is the best preacher. He's around the world giving his testimony. Four years of calling the things that be not as though they were. Everybody say that. Calling the things that be not as though they were. One day, calls him up. He said, Mom? He said, Yes, son. What's going on? He said, Mom, let me tell you what happened to me. He said, What happened? Well, this morning I was driving and I heard this preacher on television. God spoke to me and told me to give my life to the Lord. Not only do I give my life to the Lord, but I, God also told me to become a preacher. I want you to send me to Bible school. I want to be a preacher. What do I have to do? Now that same drug addict 
is now preaching the gospel and giving his testimony around the country. Everywhere. You see, he could have ended up in jail believing what the rest of the family was believing, but there was a mother that refused to believe what she was seeing. She did not go by what she saw. She did not go by what she felt. She went by faith. She trusted in that scripture. Isaiah 53, 5. All your children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of your children. Amen? Do not go by what you see. I don't care how bad your child is. My wife started doing that with me to see me turn around. Sometimes there are things in my character and my personality that needs help. I know I look perfect, but she's always confessing good things over me. She refuses to speak the things as they are. She calls the things that be not as though they were. And she calls me handsome and she calls me good looking. And now I do it to myself every time I look in that mirror. I am that good looking man that my wife says about me. And I'm getting gooder and gooder. You might not think so, but I believe it. Glory to God. And it's working. I'll never forget one time we get a phone call. And somebody was started telling us something about our oldest boy. See, my oldest child was the one that saw me come home drunk. He's the one that saw me high as a kite all the time. He experienced me when I was in the world at the worst time. So he was hurt with that. Here we come to Jesus, we get saved, but that is in his mind. So the enemy attacked him. You know, the enemy is going to attack you with the best way he can, with the weakest one in the house. He's going to try to wait to sneak in. And man, it, it hit us like a, like, like, like a ton of bricks. And when they came and told me what was going on, I said to my wife, honey, I don't believe that. I believe my son is a disciple, thought of the Lord. Great is his peace and undisturbed composure. I don't care what they're saying about him. I don't believe it. Say, I don't believe it. Say, I believe what I want to believe. Tell the guy next to you, I believe what I want to believe. See, you have a choice. And man, I just got, I pulled out a picture that I carry of him in my wallet. I took it out and put it on the headboard. And I said, honey, he's a disciple. Thought of the Lord. Great is his peace and undisturbed composure. Two days later, I got a phone call. He said, dad, I need prayer. Now, for my oldest boy to call for prayer, it is a great miracle. It is heavy duty stuff. You understand what I'm saying? You're talking about major, major stuff. Because he just refused to believe God. And he knew there existed a God, but he didn't want to ask God for help. But he's asking for help. I said, son, where are you? He said, I can't tell you. So what do you need? Uh, there's some danger. What kind of danger? Well, I got somebody's coming. There's a man coming, he said. But tell me where you are. I'll get you out of there. I'll buy you a plane ticket in the airport. Tell me where you are. No, I can't tell you. I said, son, don't leave me like this. Tell me. No, just pray. That's all he said. And he hung up. Now, what do you do when you get a phone call? You haven't heard from him for three months. What do you do? What do you think your mind is telling you about your child? I was all alone in the house except with my youngest child, Mark 11, 23, and two of his friends. So I grabbed the three of them, I went to my bedroom, got them all around the, the bed, and we got on our knees and we prayed. I went to the throne of grace Amen. to obtain mercy and find grace in a time of need. This was a time of need. I don't go there just for any Mickey Mouse thing. This is a very sacred moment for me. So the four of us are around my bed. And we're praying. And I, I took the children on a tour with me in order to help them go with me. I narrated the trip when we left planet heaven, excuse me, when we left planet earth on our way to planet heaven looking for the throne of grace. And we saw the earth getting smaller behind. And we enter into planet heaven. We saw the new Jerusalem and we knew that the, the throne of grace was in the middle of new Jerusalem. We went through the gates. There was this pearly gates. Oh, over 50 feet big. Can you imagine a gate full of, of, of a huge pearl? I thought to myself, oh, my Lord, imagine the size of that oyster. That was a big pearl. 
I noticed there were about four or five people on their knees on the gate. I wonder how come they didn't go in. There was an angel that met us at that door there. And I don't know whether he met us there or he was with us all the time. All I know that I asked the angel, what are those people doing there? And they say, oh, these people are knocking on the door of heaven. He said, how come they don't go in into the grave? Well, they haven't learned to go in. Somebody, somebody has not taught them to go into the throne of grace. So they're outside the city of heaven knocking on the door. Oh, but they're crying. They're sincere. Yeah, I know. Lack of knowledge. That's why they destroy. The angel took us in. We went through that, and we, we saw these beautiful streets of gold. I mean, to use the word gold is an injustice because the, the street was so transparent with the most beautiful metal that your mind can conceive. It wasn't paved gold. It was, it was a substance so real, so beautiful that, that, that my mind could not conceive. Gold would be the, the only word that I could use to describe the streets. And just as I got near the throne of grace, I knew it was a throne of grace because there was a river of water coming out of it. And on each side, there was a tree of life. And the, and the leaves for the trees was for the healings of the nations. And I recognize that in the Bible. And we walk inside the throne room and we get inside. I see this table, a huge table, like a, like a big executive room and with a huge, beautiful table. And, and on, the, on the edge, all I saw, God. And I knew it was God because there were little angels all around him just saying, holy, holy, holy. And then just as, just as they got down, they just started again, holy, 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 holy. And I knew that I seen that in the Bible, that there were the angels that were with the Lord constantly praising God calling him holy 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 and my spirit just screamed out of, out of me it just, it just said praise God I was in the presence of God I sensed that and all of a sudden I, I saw Jesus sitting at the right hand side of the father and he grabbed me and sat me next to him the Holy Spirit was helping me sit down with him the Holy Spirit was dressed in this white suit and he says to me, I have been here before. Relax. Just sit here and ask what you want. And in my, in my heart, I just opened my mouth and I said, I want my son Mark. And my son Mark was sitting there with me and the two kids, the friends who was with him. I said, Mark, ask what you want. And I heard Mark said, I want the salvation of my two friends. And when Mark asked for the salvation of his two little friends, I saw in their hearts something beautiful, like the hearts all of a sudden turned pure as white. I saw that. I could not understand what it was, but I saw this beautiful. I said, wow. And they, and they just started praising God. And, and Mark started praising God. And I started praising God because he was asking for his friends. And then I asked, and I started speaking in tongues. I couldn't ask. I wanted to ask for my son, but I couldn't. I was, I was speaking in tongues. When I noticed as I was speaking in tongues, the Holy Spirit was also speaking in tongues. And Jesus was speaking to the Father in a knowledgeable language. And he was interpreting what I was saying in tongues to the Father. And I was asking the Father for the salvation of my son, Junior. To get him and deliver him from that problem. Because I didn't know how to pray. At that instant, I mean, just so this thing happened so fast. At that instant, I, I just felt this peace come over me. And, and the father just said one word it is done. When he said it was done, something inside of me, that, like, like a peace that I had never seen in my life, just broke loose inside my heart. And it just like, 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 like an awakening, like, like something beautiful hit me. Like I had this assurance, everything's going to be all right. That fear that I had for my son's life just took off everything. I mean, everything. And when he said it was done, I just started praising God. And, and, the, and like, a, like the Holy Spirit was nudging me now. He says, get up and walk out and don't give your back to the Lord. And backwards, we walk backwards so we won't give our back to him just praising him thank you just saying thank you thank you i saw myself walking out of that throne room going out i saw myself leaving the the city the beautiful city 
I saw myself leaving planet heaven. I saw myself coming back into this planet earth. I saw myself entering into, into this planet, coming right into, into the United States, right into Texas, coming right into San Benito, right into my bedroom. And like I woke up on my knees over the bed. I did not understand that feeling. I did not understand what happened. All I do know is I have an alarm clock right there. I know it was one o'clock in the afternoon when I got on my knees. I'll never forget that. And as far as I'm concerned, I was not on my knees more than five minutes, but my clock says four o'clock now. I have asked and asked in my mind what happened between one o'clock and four o'clock. And I don't have an answer. I call it time that I don't have an answer for. I don't know what happened. All I do know is the two little boys and Mark are hugging each other and thanking God for their salvation. They were sobbing. I mean, like you are saved and you're grateful that somebody took something from you that was weighing you down. Those kids had a revelation of what it is to be saved. No sooner said than done, the phone rings. He was Junior. He says, Dad, he said, everything's going to be all right. The man came and he told me everything's going to be all right. He said, what man? The man. I thought he was talking about the man that was going to harm him, you know. He said, they said, who? Who is the man? The man. But who? Who told you it was going to be? The man, the Lord Jesus. He came into my room. He told me everything's going to be all right. I said, glory to God. You don't know what it feels to see your boy talking to you that way and telling you God had just visited him. And he started telling me all the things that God told him he was going to do. How everything was going to be all right. So I said, where are you, son? He says, I'm in Indiana, in Indianapolis someplace. He said, that's your closest airport? He said, yeah, well, go to the ticket counter, American Airlines. I'm buying you a ticket. And get out of there. I was scheduled to be in Houston in the first satellite conference we were going to give at New Life Church in Houston with Brother Albert Salazar. And I said to him, meet me in that church. And I'm going to send Clark to the airport to pick you up over there at Intercontinental Airport. And because I was scheduled to fly out. And we flew out there, and Clark met him at the airport and brought him over to the church, and we did this conference. From that church, we had to go to Las Vegas, Nevada, where the National Association of Broadcasters Convention were having their convention. And I was scheduled to be in this convention. So I took Junior with me, and Clark, and you know, and now can you imagine? I saw my son, and he had this Afro hair outfit. You ever seen his hair? He's, he was born with a lot of hair. I gave my wife a lot of heartburn. <laughs> Sometimes I think he's still doing it. Anyway, he had this huge hair. He, he looked like a bum. I mean, the guy looked like a mess. And we land in Las Vegas, and he looks at me, and I look at him, and I say, son, you need to go buy some clothes. You need to go take a haircut, and you, you, know, you need to shape up. I'm in bad, clean up bad. He was a mess. I pull out my American Express, and I give it to him. He says, go, and you got a $500 limit. He turns white, and I give it to him. Clark couldn't believe it. He said, Dad, are you crazy? <laughs> now, you got to understand what he meant. At that time, I had $50,000 credit on the American Express. Because when I used to buy equipment, I wanted to have double the guarantee. If you buy a, a TV camera and you put it on your American Express, it guarantees you if you have a one-year warranty, you, now you have two years because you bought it with American Express. To me, that's very valuable, especially with television equipment. So I had that kind of credit on that car. And when you give a kid in Las Vegas, in the sands, which is right next to Caesar's Palace, and you hand them a credit card, Clark almost worked out of shape. I mean, he, he says, Dad, is there something wrong with you? He, he was checking me. Let me tell you, one of the things that I heard my son say, the, one of the reasons that keeps him in the gospel now is the fact that 
his father, knowing how he was, still trusted him with a $50,000 American Express. See, in their mind, one of the wishes my children always had and prayer was that they could have the American Express for two hours. <laughs> this is something they dream about. This is their biggest fantasy. What, can, what will I do? They brag about what they will do if they had the American Express for two hours. And this is why Clark was mad. He's never, <laughs> he never gave me that American Express for two hours. And you know, Junior went out there and he spent less than $500 on it. He was very responsible. And he did not buy any flashy sports clothes. Everything was conservative. I like that. He took a haircut. That was another miracle. <laughs> Let me tell you. I don't care what your child is doing. I don't care what your husband is doing. I don't care what your daughter is doing. God will do for you as big as your faith. You are the determining factor. You are the one that's going to decide what God is going to do with your children. You are the one. How you use your faith for your own family. Do not complain and go to God and say, God, change my children when God is saying, change your faith and I'll change your, faith, your, your children. The decision is yours. You decide. My wife and I are now enjoying the benefits of using our faith. I remember when, 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 when you as a husband, uh, you know, on a day like today, like Mother's Day, when the devil tells you and, and th that you're about to lose your wife. What do you do? Take the easy route. Well, I'll get another one. That's easier said than done. <laughs> I remember for two years when I was an evangelist, I, I wasn't able to touch my wife. I said, either my wife has another man or something's going on. I didn't know what it was. And since I was traveling, I couldn't afford to think. I was putting up TV stations all over the place. And I come home one day, and I see my wife on her knees, praying and crying. And I said, there's something wrong. That's not the way she usually prays. Why is she crying and praying like that? And I said, honey, what's the matter? You got to tell me what's going on. I mean, this last two years, you're either in love with somebody else. I mean, I want to know. She had this piece of paper in her hands, and she opens up, and she says to me, honey, I'm fighting cancer. And the doctor told me to get my act together and get my family together. And I'm praying for you to have one of the six women that she wrote in a piece of paper to be the mother of my children. I saw the list. I want to pick my own. <laughs> hey, if I have a choice, personally, I'm staying alone. I already had enough. 35 years. <laughs> but I had a choice. And I went to God and I said, God, I don't have no time for this. I'm too busy. I don't have any time to train another one. Who else is going to put up with me? How many of you men know what I'm talking about? Who's gonna, who else is going to put up with you? You think it's going to be so easy? Find somebody that knows all your bad habits and put up with you too? So I asked God to heal her. And God healed her. Amen. When she prayed, she believed she was healed. Got in the word of God. She believed God. Honey, come up here. Share this few minutes how she believed God. Give Jesus a clap off in this. She believed God and she started trusting God. When she believed, she just stood her ground. She says, I believe I'm healed. And then I told her, read scriptures of healing only. Mm -hmm. And I had to take her out of the valley. Remember when I took you down to, to Washington to deliver some, some yes. applications? Yeah. Remember how diligent you was in the Word? Share that. Yeah. Well, you know, you have to understand that a lot of us, we receive the Lord, and He's our Savior, He's our healer, He's our all in all, okay? We cannot breathe and walk or do anything without the Lord. He's our number one in our life. But a lot of times, you, ha you have to understand that a lot of times we do walk through a desert. And sometimes when we walk into that desert, we have to understand 
that whatever your walk is in that death or experience, you're having a death or experience, but you will always come victorious. If you understand that you're not walking through that desert by yourself, you're walking through that desert with your Father, your Heavenly Father, with Jesus, with the Holy Ghost. We all walk through a desert experience, but it's how you handle the situation while you're walking through that desert experience that's going to come and bring you all victorious. And when I was fighting cancer in my body, I understood that there were a lot certain things, requirements that I needed to do. One of them was I needed to stay in love. No matter what the situation was, I needed to stay in love with my fellow men. I needed to trust God above all things. Because when you're walking through, through that desert, you can have a magnificent husband. You can have a magnificent, a magnificent fa family. You can have all those things, but this is your battle. You are the one that has to guard yourself, put the full armor of God on you, because this is your battle. But if you understand, like every good soldier, if you go into the, uh, into the field to fight, the good fight of faith, you're going to have to understand God, that God equips you. He gives you all the tools to walk with you. And you have to understand that you're going to come out victorious through that. You understand? It's no time for pity party. Some women, we want to be pampered. We want, there was a time when I was not so much in faith. If I had a headache, I wanted my husband to come and pat me on the back and said, honey, I'm sorry that you're going through this. But whenever I went to him with a headache, he would say, oh, I just praise God that you are healed by the stripe of Jesus. And I walk out of there very upset. Huh, how do you like that? <laughs> well, he didn't do anything for me, you know. He just told me that I was healed by the stripe of Jesus, and that was it, you know, until I realized, and the Lord spoke to me, and he says, he's teaching you the weapons. He's giving you the weapons that you need to fight the good fight of faith. Well, all those weapons that he gave me were the ones that helped me to be able to fight the fight that I was going through, and I was delivered, set free by the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm standing here with all my members intact. Praise God for that, right? But well, he did it. He did it. Now I want to talk to the mothers just a little bit before I give the microphone back to my husband. <laughs> I want to say you mothers understand that when God gave you a child, he gave you the, greater, the greatest responsibility that God can give a woman. It's a gift of God. And God gives you that gift to nurture, to teach on the ways that he shall go. Your child, when he gets taught by God, God teaches you to teach him. And all your children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of thy children. But God uses you. And I want to say to you mothers today that I praise God that the Holy Ghost has brought you to the feet of Jesus that I praise him because he had given you the knowledge of Christ, that you have held fast, and you are trusting God for the complete, the complete upbringing of your children, that you are prayer warriors, that you will get up in the morning and go at night just praising the living God for the life that he has given your child, for the wonderful walk of faith that your child is going to walk, and you praise God and you put the full armor of God upon your children. And I praise God as you stand fast before the Lord, praying for your children, worshiping God for your children, and also for your husband. Don't leave your husband out because sometimes he's the biggest child you have. <laughs> yeah. And you fight a good fight of faith. And you know what? There comes a time that your child is going to get up like the virtuous woman, like the children of the virtuous woman. He's going to recognize that you are the virtuous woman, and he's going to call you blessed. So mothers, you are being blessed. The ones that want to be mothers, you are blessed of the Lord. God bless you. Thank you. Praise God. Now you know why I don't give her the microphone too often. <laughs> She'll take over the chamba. Anyway, <laughs> listen. Being a mother comes with responsibility. Well, let me say this to you. Being a mother comes with a gift, which comes from God. Your children, the Bible says, they're heritage of the Lord. The Lord gives them to you for you to take care of them. But let me say this to you. Do you think God gave you children without giving you the power 
and the anointing to take care of them? He will be a very mean God if he did not give you that ability. And that anointing comes by faith. This is where you rise up and you use your faith and you believe God to take care of your children. This works as well as for fathers and for mothers. But today I want to concentrate on your mothers because I know how rough it is. Mothers sometimes are the most, besides being a wife, are the most unappreciated people in this planet. Reminds me of the story on Mother's Day. One time, this, this mother was, was washing the dishes, you know, after a Mother's Day banquet in the home that the mother cooked. She's out there cleaning the dishes. How many of you notice that's a Mother's Day present? When you make your mother cook for you? And this daughter saw the mother and said, Mom, Mom, what are you doing? There, take off that apron. And the mother was so happy, my daughter. My God, the first time she's considerate, you know, she t t told me to take off my apron. And she was so happy, and she takes off the apron. The daughter grabs the apron and puts it aside. You'll do them tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> just when she thought, you know, she had a daughter that was considerate, she was putting it off, you know. We all seen that. We all seen that in, in our children and we as mothers, I mean, we as mothers and fathers, we see things like that. Sometimes we see the ungratefulness. But we keep our mouth shut. But you know why? Because a mother cannot tell their children anything that will bring them condemnation. I think that's the hardest part. Not to tell a child, you ungrateful, blah, blah, blah. I guess that's why God has preachers in this planet to open your eyes and let you know how many times, you know. Because, they, 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 you know, mothers go through a lot. I remember this woman, she, she took her husband's car to go to the mall and to buy something, and, and she noticed that the car was dirty. So, you know, she just took her time, cleaned up the windshield, and, and she just scraped uh, the, 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 the bugs out of the light bulbs. You know, this is her husband's car, you know. And then she brought the car back to the driveway. She walks into the house, and she screams to her husband, Honey, the woman that loves you has cleaned your windshield, has cleaned your headlights. And the husband screams, Is mom here? <laughs> No respect. You see, she expected, you know how she felt? She said, my Lord, the woman that loves me, and this guy is still thinking that mom <laughs> is the only one that does it. Mothers, I know that you have gone through a lot. Many of you go to sleep crying for injustices, for words that the children say. And who of us have not experienced a child say some stupid thing in the spur of the moment. All of us have. I'm here to tell you, children say things that they don't mean. Sometimes they just blurt things out. And that's why you forgive and you forget. I want every mother in this place to please stand up. All your mothers, as a matter of fact, come up here right now. All your mothers, make your way up here, please. Let's pray for you. Let's take a few minutes and, and pray with you and for you. You are very special. If you see any mothers with babies in their hands, I pray that somebody will grab that baby and give that child a break from the mother or vice versa. But I'm here to tell you, mothers, you are not alone. You are God's gift to mankind. You know, God is so big, he could have said, let there be six billion people in the planet. And instantly, there would have been six billion people in the planet without mothers. <laughs> Think about that. Can you imagine a planet without mothers? I can't. I mean, it is scary. Very scary, because I remember... Somebody asked me one time, if it, was there any teacher in your school that taught you anything that made an impact on you? And I started thinking of my a math teacher, Mr. Litt, that I'll never forget. He was very, very 
instrumental in training my mind to think and calculate. And there was a science teacher. But the most important one that really taught me was my mother. She was there, very guiding me and teaching me how to deal with the teacher. See, and she taught me by her character. She will keep me there underneath her, her knees and, and pick up my hair and pull out those piojos out of my hair. <laughs> Any of you had a mother like that? <laughs> She had this, this comb, very thin comb, and she used to shh, and she used to pull those lice out of my hair. And if any one of them got true, I used to love it. I used to fall asleep. And, but while she had me there, she was talking to me. She was talking to me, training my spirit, teaching me things. And that, that I receive, you know, and, and now I thank God for that because my, my heart just, just, I mean, you know, even now when, when, when I want to fall asleep, I tell my wife, honey, pick, play with my hair. <laughs> when we used to go out, I used to, you know, come in from a date and sit in the sofa and I just lay in her lap and my wife would play with my hair and I knew any woman that would play with my hair was going to be my wife. <laughs> I don't know how she found out about it. But that woman was playing with my hair all the time. But you see, that's where we learn the actions of our mother. I used to see her suffer. I used to see how ugly my father was. I used to see his character. I used to see all those things, and I saw how she handled it. That's where I learned it. And I know many of you have gone to bed crying many a time for X reason of an injustice that your husband, your family, your children have done to you. But I'm here to tell you that God has a place where he grabs every single one of your tears and he's saving them. Every single one of those tears. He has a bottle with your tears in it. Remember that. Not one of your tears have been lost. God knows that. And I'm here to tell you that God wants to wipe the tears and the cause of those tears from your heart. Sometimes children have a way of hurting you. I have ministered to mothers that have come to me and said to me, you know, my, my daughter just told me, I don't love you, mom. And you don't know how, how tough it is for a mother to hear those words from a child that, that you carry for nine months and then you have her all of a sudden something happened and, and they just overreact to situations and they tell you ugly things like that but I have a little secret for you I have yet to meet a little girl that tells her mother that I hate you that I don't love you anymore that she meant it she was just overreacting don't ever believe those words from your children they all sincerely love you it's just that they just overreact. Sometimes in a, in, in, in a strange moment of getting angry, they just want to, oh, how could she? It seems like, especially when we reach that age of 11, 12, 13, 14, that girls become boy crazy. <laughs> and that's the age where they know everything. How many of you remember going through that age? You know everything. You cannot understand how come your mother is not so smart. <laughs> Doesn't she know that she's an embarrassment to me? Look at the way she comes out here, the way she dresses. That's the time where they find faults in us. And we look at them and they say, man, they can't be too bright. They, my mother's so dumb. I don't want to be with her. But that same little girl one day is going to become 20 and 21 years old. And the same little girl will come to the, con the same conclusion that I did. I said, my God, how much my mother has learned the last 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like it hits us that she has learned. Or is it that we have grown up? So I'm asking you to be patient with your children. Because right now, a lot of little girls are, are hurt with their self-esteem. 
And when they start striking back at their mothers and they start striking back at their parents, it is a symptom. It is not the problem. And don't you go around blaming yourself either. I know that this society, through that television tube, has been telling us that it is your fault. That you didn't do the right thing, that you didn't say the right things, that you didn't bring them up the right thing. Baloney. Each one of them had a choice. Each one of those children had a choice just like you had a choice. Don't you take that condemnation upon yourself. You give all of that to God. You are not supposed to take that kind of pressure. You were not made to hang around with that kind of pressure and stop blaming yourself. It is not your fault. Don't blame your husband either. You hang on to your husband. Stop expecting too much from each other. Just love each other and give your children to God. Say, my children, my children our, disciples, our disciples, thought of the Lord, of the Lord. Great, is their peace, great is their peace, and undisturbed composure. Come experience the best Mexican food in the valley, Los Asados Restaurant in Harlingen. Taste our delicious char-grilled chicken cooked over an open fire. Our sizzling fajitas demand attention, are very tender, and the taste, tremendous. Los Asados is conveniently located in Harlingen across from Bogus Stadium. Enjoy the best Mexican food in the valley at Los Asados Restaurant, located at 210 North 77 Sunshine Strip in Harlingen. Los Asados! APC Nursing Services and TLC Adult Daycare, serving the Rio Grande Valley and South Texas area for over 10 years. Mr. Frank Painter and his staff welcome you and encourage you to come and enjoy yourselves at one of our many locations. Elderly folks no longer need to feel left out. Come out and enjoy yourselves. APC TLC accepts Medicaid or private pay with the caring staff ready to assist you. And remember, free transportation to and from and hot meals. So come and have some fun at APC TLC Adult Daycare. Come clean with us, Clean City Cleaners. Clean City Cleaners has the best dry cleaning in the valley. An experienced and well-trained staff will handle your garments with the utmost care. Your clothes will look fabulous after visiting Clean City Cleaners. With convenient locations throughout the valley, Clean City Cleaners is just a short drive from your home. Come clean with us, Clean City Cleaners. We love our customers. For over 25 years, Jim Ginter has been serving the entire Rio Grande Valley. Now, no matter where you're located, you can take advantage of Ginter's wholesale prices on quality AC units. Log on to Ginter's internet site at MrCoolU.com or call 1-800-MR-COOL-U and Ginter will deliver your next AC unit direct to your front door. Why pay retail? Buy direct from us. Call Mr. Cool U today. Texas New Millennium builds energy-efficient homes in La Hacienda North Subdivision in Westlaco. Homes range from 780 to 1,327 square feet, starting from 39,000 to 59,000, with three bedrooms, two baths, kitchen, living room, and dining room. These homes come with central air and heat, complete alarm system, refrigerator, stove, window blinds, ceramic tile, ceiling fans, two-car driveway, and privacy fenced yards for your family's protection. Financing is available through FHA, VA, and conventional. La Hacienda North Subdivision is located one mile north of Expressway 83 on FM 1015 in Westlaco. For more information, call 956-447-0456. We are open daily, Monday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 7 p.m., and Sundays, 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. Si usted necesita asistencia médica para su vida rutinaria, Medical Equipment Supply en Bronzeville tiene todo el equipo que usted necesita para hacer su vida más cómoda. Medical Equipment Supply en Bronzeville tiene una amplia selección de sillas de ruedas, bastones, andadores y uniformes para enfermeras. Lo esperamos en Medical Equipment Supply. Estamos localizados en la calle International Boulevard en Bronzeville. Visítenos o llámenos a 956-548-0338. Medical Equipment Supply acepta Medicaid and Medicare. 